If you're thinking of getting into electronically assisted astronomy, you're going to need six essential tools. So in this video, I'm going to discuss two of those essential tools. First, the software that does the live stacking. And second, a computer that you will need to run the software and also communicate and control the camera and your mount. As always, I would appreciate it if you would like this video. And if you want to be alerted to future videos like this, please don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't already seen the first two videos in this series, you may want to take a look at the first video here where I discuss the key considerations for optical tubes and mounts for EAA. And the second video, which you can find here, on what you need to look for when you decide which camera is the right camera for you. And as always, I'll put links to the products I discuss in this video down below where it says show more. Before the availability of live stacking software, if we wanted to bring out more detail in a deep sky object and suppress the background noise, we had to take long exposures. Exposures of one minute, even 10 minutes, were not that uncommon. And in order to do that and not see star trails or elongated stars, we had to have a high quality equatorial mount and do a very good polar alignment to keep the object in the field of view for those long durations. That all changed in 2014 when a software developer in the UK by the name of Robin Glover introduced the world's first live stacking software which he calls SharpCap. You can see his home page here. In my opinion, the combination of the live stacking software and the low read noise of the CMOS cameras that became available around the same time produced a revolution in electronically assisted astronomy. Because now we could take very short exposures. Some people do as low as two seconds or five second exposures. This means we don't have to have a heavy, expensive equatorial mount. We don't have to do an, a perfect polar alignment. We can get away with a less expensive and lighter mount and do a pretty good, but not absolutely perfect polar alignment. In fact, the combination of live stacking software and short ex sub exposures with these low read noise CMOS cameras opened up the possibility to use alt azimuth mounts as well. So today you will find that there are many people who take advantage of this, use and very successfully use alt az mounts for EAA. The one limitation we need to take into account with an alt az mount is that in some parts of the sky the exposure can has to be limited to less than 30 seconds. Otherwise, you will see field rotation since the alt as mount does not um, track the Earth's rotation. And the ability to use an alt as mount means that we can find even lighter weight setups that are easy to uh, carry out into the yard or out into the field. Now, it didn't take long for other versions of live stacking software to appear. And I'll mention one of them at the end of this segment. But in my opinion, the hands down best live stacking software is SharpCap. And it's the one I highly recommend to anyone beginning in EAA. Now, why do I think it is the best? Well, first of all, it is feature rich. If you can look on this page, you'll see that the software has many, many, many features. Of course, it has live stacking capability along with the ability to capture the image in different kinds of formats. It has camera control. It provides histogramming. It allows you to stretch the image to bring out more detail. There are some focus aids to help you with getting an ideal focus. There's things like seeing monitor, sensor analysis, and plate solving as well. Now, the second reason I like SharpCap and highly recommend it is because it works with many, many cameras. Here are the cameras that SharpCap works with natively. And what does that mean natively? It means that when you plug the camera in, SharpCap will recognize the camera and be able to adjust all of its settings on a settings menu screen. 
So examples of the cameras supported you see here QHY, Altair Astro, ZWO, Starlight Express, Celestron, and many, many others including ATIC, Player One, and so forth. But if your camera is not one of these but is supported with an ASCOM driver, it likely will also work with SharpCap. So SharpCap works with a wide range of cameras, whereas some of the other live stacking software only work with specific cameras. The third reason I like SharpCap is because it's free, and you can't beat that. I mean, who gives away software with all of this power for free? Well, Robin Glover, I guess. Now, you will also notice that there is a SharpCap Pro version. And for a beginning, I recommend that you just start with the free software. Once you get a handle on the features you need in the free version, you might want to upgrade to the Pro version, which you see here is only 12 pounds a year. I think that comes out to 15 US dollars. Pretty darn cheap. And if you look here under the feature list, you'll see that the Pro version has some of these extra features. The ones I would point out that are most interesting as far as I'm concerned is the ability to do dark frame subtraction. And you can also improve the image by using flat frame correction as well. Now it has polar alignment feature that many people find very useful and easy to use to do a polar alignment if you're using an equatorial mount. It has an autofocus routine so it can actually talk to a focuser. It has automated imaging setup and so forth. So that's the third reason I like SharpCap a lot. And the final reason is that there are so many users of SharpCap across the world that if you have questions, if you want to know how to get started, if you're having a tough time figuring out where to just get started, you can find lots of video tutorials online to help you get started. There's also a SharpCap forum here on Robin's website where you can post questions and get answers to them. You see here some tutorials that are on this site. You can also find a lot of SharpCap information on some of the other astronomy forums like Cloudy Nights. So it's very well supported by Robin and there's a lot of users out there who are quite willing to answer your questions and provide tutorials. Now, if there's one complaint about SharpCap that I would agree with for a new user, it can be overwhelming in the beginning. So that's why I say start with the free version and use only the essential features you need to get started and perhaps find one of those video tutorials that you like to get going. Now as I mentioned there are several other live stacking software suites that have become available since Robin released his and one well-known and highly used one is from ZWO who makes the cameras we talked about earlier and they have this software package called ASI Studio and within that package is ASI Live, which is a deep sky stacking software. And you'll find that it has the same essential features of SharpCap. It doesn't have a lot of the extra bells and whistles, so some people like that. It's less confusing to them getting started. The downside to ASI Live is that it only works with ZWO's cameras. So if you have a QHY camera or a Celestron camera, it will not work with those. And that is true of a lot of the other live stacking software packages out there. But to each their own, pick whatever works for you. If you're undecided, take a serious look at SharpCap because that's the one I think is the best and the one I recommend. A computer is essential to doing EAA because you need it to run the live stacking software which is the heart of electronically assisted astronomy. The computer can also run any other astronomy software that you like to use, as well as your mount and other astronomy gear. And most people will use the computer as the display to view the images as well, but you could also hook it up to a much larger screen if you like using an HDMI cable, or you can use Wi-Fi to put the image on your phone, or on a tablet if you like. Now exactly what type of computer do you need? And frankly, you don't need a very fancy computer. For instance, I have used this 13-year-old uh, HP Pavilion, 
which has a core i3 processor from back in 2010. It has six gigabytes of RAM and a 500 gig hard drive. And I was able to do EAA for many, many years with this, with no problem at all, including using a 16 megapixel camera and exposures as short as five seconds. And I saw no trouble stacking those images with the software and this hardware. So any Core i3 Celeron processor or better CPU will do just fine. And I suggest at least eight gigabytes of RAM. Obviously more won't hurt, but it's not absolutely necessary. Now, as far as the long-term storage, if you're gonna save lots of your images, then you probably want at least a 500 gig solid state drive. That way you don't have to keep transferring images off your computer after your EAA session. Now in the last few years, I've been doing remote viewing, which means that when I'm at a dark site, I sit inside my RV, comfy and cozy away from the cold and the elements. At home, I can be inside my house while my uh, setup is outside in the yard. And I do that by using a headless mini PC like this B-Link U57. Now the U57 isn't around anymore, but they have a model called U59, which is an upgrade from this. And I'll put a link to that particular mini PC and a couple others that I think are pretty good choices down below the video where it says show more. Now this is a core i5 processor with eight gigabytes of RAM and a 256 gigabyte solid state drive. So this works perfectly well for EAA. In fact, the advantage of this over this old laptop mainly is the low power consumption. This uses maybe 12 watts or less, and this thing was a power hog. Now, how do I control everything if this is headless, which means there's no monitor, there's no keyboard, there's no mouse attached to this? I do that with a very inexpensive Wi-Fi router, and this is one from GLI Net. I'll put links to uh, their routers down below. They're not very expensive and they work quite well. And this just hooks up to the mini PC via ethernet and it gets its power through a USB cable from one of the USB ports on the B-Link. And together, the two of them consume maybe about 12 watts of power. So with this headless mini PC and the Wi-Fi router, I can use this or any laptop that I want to connect to this wirelessly by connecting to the Wi-Fi network that this router sets up. And if you wanna know how to do that, take a look at this video here. I go through step-by-step step how to set up uh, a Wi-Fi router and connect to it with another object. Now, it doesn't even have to be a laptop that you connect to it with. You can connect with your cell phone or a tablet. And so it's being used as a display and a terminal so that you can send control commands to this PC, which is doing all the heavy lifting. And that means it doesn't have to be anything fancy at all. Now, if you're using a laptop, desktop, or a mini PC to run the live stacking software and controlling everything, it has to be able to run Windows. So I, I believe Macs can run Windows. And the reason why you need Windows is because the live stacking software, the, the main live stacking software uh, programs that are out there only run on a Windows environment. So to sum up, for EAA, you don't need a super fancy computer. This is not traditional astrophotography where you need massive amounts of computing power and massive amounts of RAM. A simple Core i3 or better processor with at least eight gigabytes of RAM and at least 256 gigabytes of long-term storage like a solid state drive will do just fine. And you can use a headless PC if you want to connect remotely to that like I do. Now, I suggest you don't run out and buy a brand new computer if you already have one. Try what you have, download the software, connect everything up and see how well it works for you. You might be surprised that you don't have to invest a lot of money into the computer side of things and you can save that money for other astronomy equipment. And if you do that, 
you can actually see what works and what you would like to improve. That way you can make a more informed decision. So that covers both computers and live stacking software requirements for EAA. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like it and subscribe if you want to see future videos like this, including the next one in this series where I'll talk about DC power requirements for EAA. And as always, you can check out my website, californiaskies.com, for more content on astronomy and astro equipment.